Welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to start a new building today. Uh, we're going to start on the freight station that was in Grafton, West Virginia on the B&O Railroad as the next structure that I'm working on towards uh, putting all the buildings together for a, an eventual layout on Grafton, West Virginia and the surrounding area. So stay tuned. Okay, we're starting a new building, which I already explained we're going to get started in the freight station that was here in Grafton, West Virginia. Uh, this building was not quite as old as what the beanery was, and uh, you know, I've got several things that I can work from to figure this building out and how to build it. Uh, but I want to start from ground zero, just like I do with all my buildings. So for you out there that are wanting to scratch build buildings and don't know how to go about it, these are all the steps that you would need to be able to figure out how to build a building for yourself that just doesn't exist in kit form out there, but you want to make for your railroad, whether it be the house you live in, a, a tower, a station in your, in your little hometown, or whatever the structure may be. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to get started figuring all this out so you can build a structure. One of the most important things and something that really doesn't happen much on my work surface is to have an organized and very clean work surface. I try just to keep the things that I use on, a, on an everyday basis on top the workbench. There is a little clutter in the back here, but basically I just try to keep the paints that I use all the time, all the various glues here you see that I use all the time. On that right hand side there was just an area where I keep some stuff for molding and, and various things like that that I use frequently. On this back corner, I try to keep all the small hand tools and stuff that I use on an everyday basis and you know, a few paint brushes and stuff, uh, knife blades and stuff in a box here. And then on this side, I, I keep all my measuring instruments and things that I use for marking uh, everything I cut or need to mold or anything like that, anything I need to measure, my, you know, my writing utensils as well. And you can see a lot of other stuff off the edge of my desk here on top of filing cabinet just several canisters full of different things but this is the most important part right here a good clean open work surface it's easy to stay motivated with the good works now with this building you know i'm really really blessed because i have a couple different sets of blueprints to use with this building and uh, you know what I do with these, this is the first sheet here, I blow up individual sections and uh, print them out so that I can keep them all right beside me while I'm doing my work. You know, and these show where the a wall is behind the building, the platforms. I also blow up then, you know, just the structure itself. And if you can do it perfectly to scale, this will help you tremendously laying everything out when measuring stuff for your buildings. But this gives all the dimensions to the building, and this one I'll probably just leave on a table. And then there's this end shot of the building as well. I mean, it, it does show a few interior details on this, but it shows you the wood scrolling that supports the overhangs and the roofs, uh, you know, and basic layout for the building. Now you have to be careful when you're using some of these prints because a lot of times these are proposed print, prints and weren't made exactly as they are on the print. And this second story building was not built this way on top of the, the original building. Now this was the original set of prints for this building, you know, in the early 1800s. And, uh, you know, I do the same thing with this as I do with the others. I, I blow up individual sections of each of those little drawings on there and then keep them all. And this one gives you dimensions and things that were not on some of the other drawings. You know, how far from the tracks, the platform heights, the eave heights, and just, you know, several things that were not involved on the other drawings. So, you know, just make prints of all these and keep them right next to your workbench. And like I said, if you can get them to all to be perfectly to scale that, that's just you know a, a, a great thing if you can't you know just 
keeping them on your computer right next to where you're drawing and a lot of times you can you know blow these up on the screen of your computer with a scale rule if you have one dimension correct then you know you can measure everything else to scale and, and you'll have the proper dimensions so if you can't blow them up on paper to perfect size having your computer right there and a scale rule and doing it that way will help you get the dimensions that you're missing to be able to blow up the building and get it to scale and the next thing, you know, I collect every single picture that has a tiny shot of the building somewhere in it. I mean, this has a picture of the second story roof on it. You know, and this came from West Virginia University's regional collection. Then, you know, there's several here that came from the B&O Historical Society's collection. Let me stutter a little bit here. And, uh... You know, it, it just all these give you tiny bits of information. This shows how the platform roof tied into that end of the building there, and uh, the inlaid brickwork. Uh, you know, it also kind of time dates when some things were changing. The overhead on the back side of that building was changing at that point. This is the earliest known picture I have of this building, and while I can't use a lot of information off of it, it's, it's just a neat shot to have. This is right after the turn of the century, around 1900, and the windows and everything were changed in this building after that. And, uh, you know, here the overhang is still there, so this is slightly prior to that picture, but the windows have been shortened. These, used to, these little square wind, windows with the archway used to be deeper, and they were changed to this short pattern. Yeah, and even uh, pictures from a distance, I, 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 you know, I keep them in the collection because a lot of times you can blow these up and get situations as to how buildings next to them were, uh, you know, how everything fit on the property. And this one here especially, you can blow this up and get tons of information off this uh, you know, picture here. At this point, it has shingles on the roof, regular newer shingles on the roof. You know, you can see the, the second story building and the, the applications of wood to the outside of it or metal, I mean. And on that one end of the building, there's actually stairs that come to a, a door to the second floor that come down from that bridge. So you need to have the information. And these pictures here really, you know, they're, they're not well lit so it doesn't give you a lot of good information but I keep them and put them in there anyway and anything I can you know discern from them I use that information even distant pictures this is from the opposite side of that overhead bridge you know I may want to come back and model these two buildings later on because this track that siding that served these two buildings served this freight station as well and from this you can see that you know this was all cobble or a brick cobblestone that came down in here at one time and and serviced this building uh, you can see power lines down there this just gives you a better shot of the supports on the bridge the bridge you know it was like this during the time period that we modeled prior to that there was an older bridge that there are shots of in some of these pictures you know, and these close-ups give you a real good picture of these inset walls and the arches over the doors that have bricks. And then there's a tiny ornamental row over that arch of uh, a detail, which we got to figure out how to do. This round vented structure in this end and all the woodwork around it. The wood scrolling that supports the roofs and the eaves on this building. Uh, you know, I mean, even this building, this picture here, uh, you know, we're not going to be doing this little metal building, but look at the tiny detail of the wood scrolling of that roof support on, you know, that's just the best shot of that I could find. Um, so I save every picture I can. The windows in that last shot too gave me the number of panes that I needed. And this one, you know, it doesn't tell me a lot, but it shows me this light fixture on the second story roof that, uh, you know, it was an old, old light fixture. So this would have been here during the time that we model. So, you know, these are just some pictures I came back of my own collection because this building still does exist. So I came back and measured a few things on the building and took more pictures on a good sunny day. And some of them like this just show, 
the building layout, the stone wall behind it, there's a street above that that comes up and meets the road that comes across from that bridge, and uh, you know how it lays out back there. This gives me a better idea of some of that wood scrolling up around that vent, uh, a better shot of the angle, side angle of some of that brick step out tooth work above one of those little small window insets. Uh, you know, the corner inset here, uh, just you know, a couple feet back from the corner, there's another inset that kind of mimics the, the doors and window insets, and those are on the long sides of the building, so they need to be added in. And either side of the doors, there's these little um, set outs as well that would have um, supported the wood that supported the overhangs at one time. So these little insets, even though they're not being used at this point, were there. You know, and pictures of the doors, the wood, the angles of all the uh, planking that was on the freight doors, uh, so you can get the angles and stuff right if you make these doors versus buying them. And I was able, you know, since it was a nice sunny today, to get a better picture of the supports that came down from the bridge to the door on that second story building. So, you know, I was real lucky that this building still does survive because I was able to get better pictures of some of this stuff um, to give me a better idea of how this building was put together and made. Um, you know, just a very invaluable source to some of the weathering on the metal on the top later on in time. <coughs> and you know, I just took multiple pictures, just many, many, many pictures. Um, you can't beat photographs when it comes down to sitting down and painting or uh, figuring things out. Well, how was that? I don't remember. And you can, you, know, you can break out a picture and it'll tell you. And if the building's still existing, just make sure you get permission from the property owner to go back and take those. You don't need to be arrested and uh, put into jail for, uh, you know, trespassing on somebody's property. So do everything right, you know, get permission, go back and, and take Take the measurements and photographs. Most people are willing to let people do that if you explain what you're doing it for. Um, so anyway, just continuing on with all the pictures. This gives those brick insets at the top of that uh, panel, you know, really good detail here in the window and the arch and that ornamental section above the arch. This is just a real nice close-up of this vent in one end of the building. And, you know, to be able to figure out, well, how am I going to do that? All the wood ornamentation and scrolling that supports that area, the angled boards and that uh, wooden support and the eave up there. Nice Yosemite Sam picture here, which was a safety slogan, which, you know, we won't be using during our time period. But if you're modeling, modeling a more modern time period, you know, this is something you may want to blow up and, and put together. And sometimes pictures from around the area. This is the post office that's set up the hill. You can see a tiny piece of the end of the roof of the building in the lower right of this photograph. But this was the reason that long picture was, or uh, platform was there to unload mail for this building up here. And, uh, you know, it just it gives you the reason why that platform was on there and, and how some of that land laid out to uh, make this work. Now I try to touch on a different tool each video that I do and uh, you know my eyes are nowhere near what they used to be so there's several different things that I use to overcome this situation I do have this one light that has a magnifying lens in the middle of it and I don't use it that much but uh, what I use more than anything are actually these visors here there's two different sets of magnification that I can flip down on the main ones or if I need to get really tiny I can just you know change that little loop on the side around and use one eye to see really highly detailed stuff and then there's these glasses that I bought here these are incredible but you, you know you've got to be really up close and personal they do have lights on them to light because you're going to be close enough you're blocking your light uh, but man you could probably write the preamble of the Constitution on a coin side with these so there's the information on getting ready to start a new building um, I'm really enjoying this freight station build. I, I've been looking forward to this one. I mean, it has a lot more ornament, ornamentation than brickwork, which is going to become, uh, 
you know, a little more involved trying to figure out how to get all those little things done, but I think I've got most of it figured out, and we'll go into more of that in the next video. Uh, you know, some of the things that I didn't cover in this one, you know, the last building we built, I had no blueprints, and I had to blow up pictures and count bricks, and, you know, a standard door size typically is uh, three feet wide, six, eight inches tall, and um, six foot, eight inches tall. And, you know, windows vary. Uh, and, and in the 1800s, that varied even more. I mean, that's pretty commonplace in today's world. Uh, and even back then, counting bricks, because bricks were local, all local made, and they weren't all a standardized size, so there were different sizes in bricks. So thank God in this building, we don't at least have to blow up pictures and count bricks and things to figure out dimensions for this building. It's nice to have blueprints. And remember in the last building, and, and if you run into this in your building, it is an option for figuring out some of it, um, the Sanborn maps. You can usually find them at your uh, state's uh, uh, university or even online. You can find a lot of them. The uh, government and the Library of Congress has been digitizing all the Sanborn maps. I'm not sure where they are in that process. Uh, but there's access to Sanborn maps and they give footprints to a lot of these buildings that were along the railroads and different buildings in towns that you may be wanting to model. So you can always blow those up to scale and at least get a, a footprint for your building and from there figure out dimensions on uh, the rest of the building and it's just another place to work from. Uh, but thank God we didn't have to blow to do that and blow that up for this building either. Um, Another place to look for information, I know I went over all this in the last building, but I'm going to do this each build because new people join the channel. Uh, but look at local historical societies, uh, county historical societies, historical societies in the cities where you live. A lot of those people have collections of pictures and things that will give you references for the buildings that you want to model. Uh, your state's uh, university, a lot of times will have regional collections of photographs or maps or, or a lot of different materials that you can access and get copies of to be able to build buildings you're wanting to do. Uh, one of the main uh, areas that I really received a lot of information and I, I have to give a big, big, big shout out to was the B&O Historical Society. I volunteered at the uh, Historical Society for about three and a half years, one weekend a month is all we were active. And uh, you know, you went and you spent a Saturday and Sunday sorting through records and boxes of materials donated and that kind of thing and trying to uh, organize a uh, historical society's data, you know, and all the stuff in their collection. And uh, you know, during that period of time, I just collected so much. I mean, I've probably got an area that's about nine foot tall by ten foot long, long along a wall that's just reference material that I collected over those years. I bought a lot of slides and, and various things on eBay as well. Uh, you know, I got together with local people and they had pictures and stuff in their collections, uh, railroad workers uh, from the areas that you model. A lot of them have, have uh, access to stuff in their collections or they know people that have pictures and stuff in the local area of the railroads and the buildings around them. So, um, you know, all these things are just sources of information for, uh, you know, finding out what you need to do to get to the point where you can build your building. All these little references are just invaluable. You, you can't get enough. I mean, you saw some of those pictures that I had. You know, most of them you think, well, there's, yeah, why would you even include that? There's nothing you can get from it. But you never know till later on you're looking for something and you think, I wonder if that picture had that information. You blow up, sure enough, there's you know some detail information that you would not have had in any other way. So I, you know, I I keep every tiny little source for everything that I can find, um, and it all it all becomes useful one way or another down the road. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, learning out how to put information together for building a structure. I hope you're jumping out there and building some structures as we go along and do this series. Uh, in the next video, we'll show you uh, how to f figure out the materials and how to lay things out, how to, um, 
you know, d discern what am I going to include, what am I not, because these buildings do change over time. If you're modeling a specific era, that pretty much dictates what you're going to include on the building that you're building. Uh, but if you're not, like in my last building, I included, included just a few things from a few different time periods. The main building was exactly as it was during the time that I want to model, but I included a door here that turned into a window because I like it just added interest to the building. A toolbox on one side of the building which wasn't there later on during my time period but I think it added interest so I left it in there. Just some of those little things. What, I wanted, what am I going to do? What am I not going to include? Um, and those kind of choices you need to make before you start building your building. And uh, you know things can change while you're building your building as well but in any case um, like and share these videos. There's a lot of people out there that would like to know how to build buildings and really don't have a clue how to get started in all this. So, you know, not that I'm the best in the world, but I hope this gives some direction and, and brings up some points that maybe you had not considered in uh, starting a structure. It's, it's not really hard. It's really not. It's not complicated. It's just figuring out. It's taking time to do the research and figure out how you're going to do it. And, you know, materials are available out there. You can get stuff to build your buildings. You don't have to spend a lot of money. That last building, if I had bought a kit for a building like that, it would have been hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think I had, well, I know I had less than $100. I haven't figured out exactly how much of materials I had in it, but it was nowhere near $100. It was more time. And it was a lot of time figuring out, well, how am I going to do this? You know, some things I molded. I think in this building, I'm going to probably mold a few things too, so we'll go through that process. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just something a lot of people out there want to know how to do these things and uh, share this information with them and maybe they can get a clue so they won't feel so intimidated and they'll jump out there and scratch build some buildings. That's what it's all about, sharing of information. Subscribe to my channel down below this video on YouTube. There's a little red button that uh, you know you can press and it, you subscribe to the channel. Right beside that is a bell. If you press that bell then you'll be notified each week when I have a video come out. And I try to get these out every Friday. Uh, the spring season is just getting ready to get started. So I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to um, keep these coming out on a seven day basis. It might go to a 10 day basis or something. I'm not sure. I do landscaping. I fruit farm and I grow nursery stock. So I have really three full time jobs that <laughs> keep me busy, especially in the springtime. Um, I do try to videotape these a few in advance so that can buffer out some of that time and uh, you know I enjoy doing this so I do make some time to do this but I'm not sure how my schedule is going to be through this spring so so if, if things change a little bit you're aware of that but I am going to continue to put out a lot of videos and I do appreciate you coming back and spending time with me and building some railroad structures and um, you know just get some materials and start something of your own even if it's a little small outhouse or something just play with it and learn and uh, you'll grow into doing your own bigger buildings as well so uh, you know take all that time to do that and happy model railroading